what is the concept of a heat engine an engine is supplied with some kind of energy and then the engine containing a thermodynamic system goes through a cycle to achieve the initial parameters which in turn is utilized to get some useful work done again energy is supplied to the system and the process is repeated suppose energy is gained by a system can all of this energy be used to do useful work the answer is no or in other words no engine can have 100% efficiency a part of the energy absorbed by the engine from a high temperature reservoir can be utilized to obtain useful work and the rest of the heat is rejected to the low temperature sink this is the essence of the kelvin planck statement of the second law now we will discuss about the most efficient heat engine that is the carnot engine which is based on the carnot cycle and the engine has a cylinder having frictionless piston containing ideal gas carnot cycle is the framework of an ideal engine having maximum efficiency possible this is because frictional losses and conduction losses are minimized and work done is maximized by proceeding reversibly the cycle is completed in four steps step 1 and 3 are isothermal process step 2 and 4 are adiabatic process now for adiabatic process t2 v2 to the power gamma minus 1 equal to t3 v3 gamma minus 1 this implies v2 by v3 to the power gamma minus 1 equal to t3 by t2 which is equal to tl by th similarly v1 by v4 gamma minus 1 equal to tl by th therefore v2 by v3 equal to v1 by v4 which implies v2 by v1 equal to v3 by v4 now step 1 is an isothermal expansion at a high temperature th the ideal gas in the cylinder absorbs this amount of heat from a reservoir at temperature th the gas expands isothermally and reversibly and does work on the surrounding the work done is negative because work is done by the system but q equal to minus w for isothermal process therefore heat absorbed equal to n r t h ln v2 by v1 heat absorbed is positive step 2 is adiabatic expansion from th to tl reversible adiabatic expansion of the gas for this purpose the system is thermally insulated by an adiabatic wall the work done by the system is negative The work done by the system is W equal to minus N C V T H minus T L. It is a negative work because work is done by the system. Step three: isothermal compression at lower temperature T L. Here work is done on the system. Therefore, work done is positive. It is equal to N R T L L N V three by V four. which is equal to nrt l ln v2 by v1 now since it is an isothermal process therefore delta u equal to 0 and heat rejected q out equal to minus nrt l ln v2 by v1 step 4 is adiabatic compression from tl to th your work done is on the system and it is positive which is equal to ncv th minus tl therefore adding all the work done we get the net work done which is equal to minus nr th minus tl ln v2 by v1 this is actually negative because work is done by the system the net work done is equal to q in plus q out that is heat supplied and the heat rejected and the heat rejected being negative heat supplied to the system in step 1 is n r t h ln v2 by v1 efficiency eta equal to minus w by q where w is the work done by the system 
and Q is the heat supply. This negative sign is given to make the efficiency positive. Therefore, eta equal to TH minus TL by TH. Now, it can be said that efficiency eta is also equal to heat supplied plus heat rejected divided by heat supplied. Now, simplifying, we get Q out by TL plus Q in by TH equal to zero. At this stage, we introduce another thermodynamic term entropy, denoted by S, such that delta S equal to Q divided by T. Note carefully that if the heat involved in the process is a reversible process, then only this ratio is equal to entropy, otherwise not. Also note that delta S for a cyclic process is zero. Therefore, it is proved that S is a state function.